Today we're going to look at a class of numbers that are simply repeating ones and zeros. And we're going to determine which of these numbers is prime. Well, let's observe that it can't end into zero and be prime because then it would be divisible by two and five, or in other words, 10. So it must end in a one. So in other words, the number is of the form one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, so on and so forth, one, zero, one. Oh, and I'd like to point out this is from the math magazine. So just doing a little bit of exploration to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. If we look at the first one of these numbers, 101, well, that is prime. And then the second one of these numbers, 10101, is not prime. It's in fact 3 times 7 times 13 times 37. And then if we add another 10 at the beginning, it's again not prime. The interesting thing about this, though, is it's divisible by 101, which we'll use that as we move forward. And then if we add another one zero to the beginning, it's again not prime. And so I think we're beginning to believe that maybe 101 is the only prime number in this list. And in fact, it is. And let's see how we can show it. So let's introduce a little bit of notation. So let's set x sub n equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, 1, 0, 1, where there are in different ones. And now I'm going to split this into two cases, the case when the index is even and the case when the index is odd. And let's start by looking at the case when the index is even. And observe that there are two of those cases on the board right now. We see that x2 is equal to 101 and then we see that x4 4 is equal to, well, I'm actually going to write this as 101 times 73 times 137. And the important thing here is that this is equal to 101 times some other number. I'll just put a box here to mean that it's a multiple of 101. And in fact, that's the claim that we're going to prove to show that all of the rest of these even indexed x's are not prime. Okay, so let's get that written up. Okay, so in other words, we want to show for all n bigger than or equal to 1, x sub 2n is a multiple of 101. Which, of course, that means that x sub 4, x sub 6, so on and so forth are not prime because they'll be 101 times a necessarily smaller number. Okay, cool. Well, how does the proof of this go? Well, we can do it by induction, I guess. Our base case is on the board right here with x2, or maybe even x4 would be a second base case. And then we would perhaps look at x sub 2n plus 2 and see if we can show that that's a multiple of 101 if we assume x sub 2n is. And in fact, we can, and it's not so bad. So let's write this as 1, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, 1, 0, 1, where there are 2n plus 2 total 1s. And the important thing here is we can rewrite this as 1, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, plus 101, where let's observe that I just took this 101 that's at the end and I maybe moved it off of the entire term into its own term. And that would be these first three digits. And notice the digit just to the left of that is a zero. So everything here works. But now let's observe that this is simply equal to x to the fourth power times, notice that that is x sub 2n, and then we have plus 101. And how do we know that that's x sub 2n? Well, if this started with 2n plus 2 ones, we rewrote it like this, then there are necessarily 2n ones right here. But now let's observe that x sub 2n by our induction hypothesis can be written as a multiple of 101. But then we've got a 101 here as well. So this is the sum of two things that are multiples of 101, which means in the end, we could write this as 101 times some number. In other words, it's a multiple of 101. 
And so that takes care of all of the even cases. And we've shown that the even cases give us a single prime number when x2 is equal to 101, but it doesn't give you any other prime numbers. Okay, so now what about the odd indexed x's? Well, let's look at those. Okay, so moving on to the odd indexed terms, that means we're looking at things of the form x sub 2n plus 1. So in other words, this is going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, 1, 0, 1. And here there are going to be 2n plus 1, 1s. And then because there's a 0 between every 1, there will be exactly 2n zeros. So in the end, we have 4n plus 1 total digits. But now let's take advantage of the fact that there are an odd number of digits and do the following. Let's do 11 times x to the 2n plus 1, which can pretty clearly be written as 10 times x to the 2n plus 1 plus x to the 2n plus 1. So that's going to leave us with something like this. We'll have 1, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, 1, 0, 1, 0, and then plus 1, 0, 1, 0, so on and so forth, 1, 0, 1. The important thing is that we've shifted x sub 2 and plus 1 over a little bit. We've put a 0 at the extreme right hand side. But that means when we add these together, a 1 is always combining with a 0. So in the end, we'll just get a number which is a repeated digit of 1. And in fact, there are exactly 4 n plus 2 total digits. Okay, but now what can we do with that? Well now I'm going to take that and write it in the following way. I'm going to write this as 1 repeated a bunch of times and then times uh, 10 to the 2 n plus 1 and then after that we're going to have plus 1 repeated a bunch of times. Now how many times are we repeating? Well in each case we are repeating 2n plus 1 total times. But notice essentially what this does is it splits our rep unit of 1 into two pieces. And we're able to do that because there are an even number of digits. But now let's observe that we're able to factor this 1, 1, 1, 1, so on and so forth out of the whole thing. And what's that going to leave us with? So we're going to have 1, 1, so on and so forth. And then after that, we'll have 10 to the 2n plus 1 plus 1, just by the distributive rule. But now from here, we could argue that our x sub 2n plus 1 is composite. And that's because we factored 11 times x to the 2n plus 1 into a product of numbers, both of which are larger than 11. And so that means one of these numbers, whichever one is not divisible by 11, is a divisor of x sub 2n plus 1. And I guess I should mention that we know that x sub 2n plus 1 is not divisible by 11 by a simple divisibility test for 11 where we take the alternating sum of the digits. That being said, we can go a little bit further and actually factor this. If you recognize that there are 2n plus 1 digits right here, that means that this bit is not divisible by 11, but that means that this bit must divide our x sub 2n plus 1. But we can even go better. Since we know that this x to the 2n plus 1 plus 1 is divisible by 11, we can factor it out. And since there's structure to that, we can actually factor it out to something kind of nice. This factors as 11 times, and then it's going to be repeated nine zeros with a nine one at the end. Now you can check that if you multiply 11 into that, that's exactly what you get. You get this x to the 2 and plus 1 plus 1. And I should point out that there are 2n total digits right here. But now observe that we can simply cancel the 11 from both sides of this equation and we've got our factorization of x sub 2n plus 1, meaning that it is not prime. And that's a good place to stop.